Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, welcome back, Gina, to the, the committee. Thank you, Senator. Uh, your budget proposal includes $235 million for the EPA efforts to cut carbon pollution out of the greenhouse gases, including the Clean Power Plan. Mm -hmm. uh, given the Supreme Court's issue to stay in the final rule for the Clean Power Plan, uh, I want to ask about the costs and benefits about this final rule. You stated in the EPA's regulatory analysis of the Clean Power Plan that the purpose of the rule is to cut CO2 emissions from the contribution to climate change, quoting. The EPA website defines climate change to include major changes in temperature. Uh, I'm trained in engineering, chemical engineering, looking at numbers. Can you tell me what the impact of global warming would be from the Clean Power Plan? Actually, the Supreme Court asked us a very similar question and agreed with us that while we can't define the exact uh, reductions that would be achieved from any one action in climate, there is absolutely no reason to do that because we know it will take a lot of efforts to actually make those reductions. And the President's move to actually push forward with this climate action plan and the Clean Power Plan was to recognize that the energy sector is our largest source, stationary source of so emissions, the, the, but the, the, and they're, will they're, make big progress moving forward domestically and internationally. But I think it's important we seek to quantify because we have quantified oh. the tremendous, well, impact okay. on people. Yes. In Montana specifically, as we were one of the yes. state's hardest hit by yeah. this plan. Uh, Cato ran the numbers through the magic algorithm and assessed that the change in climate temperature for the world would be 0 0.02 degrees centigrade between now and the year 2100 as a result of these regulations, which says it's a rounding error. And Yet, as we look at what impact it will have on the people of Montana, it's a loss of 7,000 jobs. These are, this is studied by the University of Montana. This wasn't some conservative think tank. This is the objective. They're very respected back home, Conser University of Montana. 7,000 lost jobs, $145 million of lost tax revenues we used to support our schools and our teachers and infrastructure double digit increases in utility rates, and a loss of $1.5 billion of economic activity in Montana per year. And the conclusion one is the single largest economic impact and event to occur in Montana in over 30 years. So we've quantified the impact of families. I've stood and looked at the families there that are going to lose their jobs because of this. For what? For, for one quantitative analysis for 0 0.02 degrees centigrade change in temperature between now and the year 2100. Why are we doing this? Sir, the actual net benefits of this rule are very large, not just in terms of our ability to generate the kind of, of actions on climate change that are necessary to protect those very families. But wait a minute, but what, but wait a minute. It, but if, it's, if, the, the, if the impact on temperature is, is virtually negligible, what, what impact are we trying to drive here? We're trying to get actual domestic and international agreements, which this Clean Power Plan has helped to initiate to get worldwide response to what is essentially a worldwide problem. So, so by, getting, by getting out of the, the uh, by killing the coal industry, what your regulations are doing. No. They're killing coal fire plants. The regulations are going to result in the shutdown of coal strip units one, two, three, and four. It's a significant, where we, over 50% of the electricity generated in Montana is from coal fire plants. You're going to shut them all down with these regulations. And I lived in China for five years. I've breathed the air. We need to help China continue to become better in terms of managing their environment. But to completely step away from the coal-fired business and to take American innovation out of the equation, to let America lead in clean coal technology versus ceding this to Chinese, I think is a grave strategic mistake as it relates to overall stewardship of the planet. I think there's, there's many ways in which Montana can achieve these standards. We've tried very hard to make sure they're both reasonable and flexible. But, sir, you no, wait, have to the look proposed at rule was very different from what was actually rule. generated. You, 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 you gave us a proposal, and the actual rule came out. That's it was correct. a bait and switch in Montana. It is correct. And so we've been caught absolutely here with, we're cornered. No, what happened was the number did shift, but the way in which you're allowed to achieve that number and the flexibilities very much changed to allow that number to be very commensurate with the same strategy you would have used to achieve the proposal, you can still find as an amenable strategy. We, we, we don't, we're, we're struggling right now. 
we don't see a path forward on this at the moment other than to have to literally look at shuttering our coal ship units one, two, three, and four. This is a big, big issue. And again, the study says the single biggest economic impact to hit my state in over 30 years. These are real families. This is tax revenues for our teachers and our schools. It's one and a half billion dollars a year to my state. We can't replace that. Well, we, we share the concern for, for families. I think we j I just view certainly climate change as being a very large threat. Well, but wait a minute. Come back to it, quantifying it, though. I challenge you to come back and tell me why the Cato study is wrong. 0 0.02 degrees centigrade between now and, and the year 2100. It's sure, been quantified through the magic algorithm coming from the, the EPA. That's not the benefit that you're trying to establish or quantify here. There are both costs and benefits. Our RIA for this, this rule showed that in 2030, we are looking at upwards of $45 billion every year in benefits. And so there are benefits from traditional pollutant reductions, and there are certainly going to be benefits, as Paris showed, in the U.S. providing domestic leadership that will underpin strong international efforts. What? In that international effort, it is what is going to allow us to reduce greenhouse gas emissions in a way that is going to provide a more stable... Ch China, as you know, can, it, China consumes 50% of the world's coal right now. We're about 10% here in the United States. And so we've got the tail wagging the dog here. This is where we have got to, I think, the better strategy. And you're, yeah. you're hearing from somebody here who who is a passionate outdoorsman, loves spending time at 10,000 feet with, uh, with my backpack on, and an and ardent protector of clean water and clean air as a fifth generation Montanan. But we've got to be also, I think, have the right balance here. And I think strategically, by working with us to develop clean coal technology is a better strategic bet, and we can help the Chinese with this, ultimately, because if they don't change, they're not going to solve some of these challenges we face globally. And well, so I just think we're making a grave mistake well. by killing the industry yeah. and taking away American innovation from boilermakers, the trade unions, and so forth, who want to work to solve this problem. Instead, you're going to put them out of work. And that's the reality of it. All right, sir. Thank you. Thank you.